Hi, I'm Casey Johnson. I'm a fourth grade math teacher, and today we're going to be talking about equivalent fraction lessons for fifth grade. So, one of the things that really will help your students understand equivalent fractions is if you'll draw a picture. I'm going to start with a real easy one, one half. Now here's my picture of one half. I recommend using rectangles and not circles because they're easier to cut into equal pieces. So if this is one half, now I can cut that into smaller pieces by drawing a line there. I haven't changed the amount that I've shaded, so now I can see that I have two shaded out of four, so I have two fourths. Now I can continue to cut it into equal pieces and not change what I've shaded and come up with more equivalent fractions to one half. And I can do this as many times as I want to. And I will still have an equivalent fraction. Uh, let's take a look at another one. Let's do two thirds. So here are my thirds. One, two. There's two thirds. And if I cut that, say, here, I now have four out of six shaded, so four six. And if I cut it again, I can now see that I have eight pieces shaded out of 12, so eight twelfths. And again, I can continue cutting that into smaller pieces and generating equivalent fractions. I found with uh, fourth and fifth graders, it really helps them to see a picture of the fraction to help them understand what these numbers mean. Now, once they've gotten that pretty well, you can move on to doing this without the pictures. Uh, let me use one I haven't used so far, like three-fourths. Now, all you have to do is multiply or divide, in this case we're going to multiply both the top and bottom number by the same thing. So let's say I multiply both the top and bottom by 2. I'll end up with 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. So that's an equivalent fraction to 3 fourths. And I can use any number to multiply those by. I can do times 5. And I'll have 15 over 4 times 5 is 20. So that's two different ways you can work on equivalent fractions. Just remember, if you're doing it without the pictures, whatever you do to the top number, you have to do to the bottom number. You can see I've done the same thing here. Um, one thing that's really fun to have the students do is give them a fraction. I usually start with one half on this and just have them generate a list of how many equivalent fractions they can come up with for that fraction. So, you know, for one half you'll get two fourths, three sixths, four eighths, etc. They, they'll come up with all sorts of different ones, 50 one hundredths, 1,000 two thousandths, and they'll actually start to see the relationship between the numerator and the denominator as well.